I've noticed that happiness can be defined and experienced quite differently by different people. And it is a mistake to imagine happiness as a concept because if everybody's imagining it differently and experiencing it differently, defining it differently, then how can we share a concept about it? It's too broad. It's like love. Love and happiness are two concepts that have so many variations that it's not something that I can point to as a concept and say, this is what I'm talking about. So that's what this conversation is about. Because from the very beginning of that conversation, we're talking about two different things. My definition and experience of happiness is all about meaning making. I'm all about the journey, that cliche. It's about the journey, not the destination. You know, you hear that all the time. But do you actually subscribe to that philosophy? Do you embody that philosophy? No right or wrong. No judgment whether you do or you don't. But is it about the journey for you? Because I'm noticing that there's a lot of people who really enjoy the destination. Some people get a huge amount of satisfaction from completing a goal. And it is all about getting to the finish line. That's when they feel that immense sense of happiness, as they would define it and experience it. And, of course, because I define and experience happiness differently, when I look at that, I judge it. I think, how absurd that somebody would limit themselves to such a brief moment of happiness. I feel like, you know, the journey is most of it. Like most of life is being on the way. Like you create goals, you create plans, you dream, and then you start to move towards it. So if I create happiness or my experience of happiness during that time, it's like mathematical to me. Like that means that I'm going to experience happiness more frequently. Like I'll simply be happy more of the time than if I chose to define and experience my happiness through success and achievement. Like those moments where the journey is complete, we've, we've achieved what we set out to do and we can give ourselves a pat on the back. As I'm saying this, I'm realizing that the limiting belief here is there's a few things that are coming up. One thing is like I can experience happiness both ways. Historically, looking back throughout my life, I haven't really felt very much happiness as I'm like, and again, like even though I'm trying to break down the concept of happiness and explain it, we still don't actually have anything to point to. But forget that for a moment. I haven't really felt, you know, that sense of fulfillment, happiness, completion, contentment at the end of a journey. Generally, I get to the finish line, I achieve my goal, and what I would describe the feeling has been a lot of the time is emptiness. Like, oh, the happiness is over now. That's what I feel. Um, or another thing that has happened historically when I look back throughout my life is an expectation. Like, when I get this, I'll be happy. Like, I'll feel like this. I have a picture of what it's going to feel like. I imagine what it's going to feel like. I just think like after all of this work, after this huge journey, the feeling of happiness, it must be immense. Like it must be so great. But then when I arrive there, I'm still feeling all the things that I'm feeling. It's not like everything just, you know, like all of the 
other things that are going on inside of me are subdued by this overwhelming sense of completion. That's kind of what I expect to experience at the end of a big journey, at the end of like, you know, having a goal, having a dream, breaking it down into steps and completing all of those steps successfully. Like, I kind of had that picture of like, okay, that's going to be immensely satisfying. But yeah, it's not so much now in the present moment, but I'm just, as I've changed my mind and changed my view of the world and like let go of so many limiting beliefs it's interesting to just reflect on what it used to be like as well as what it's like now because now i do generally feel a lot more satisfaction on like throughout the journey and when i arrive but the things that would stop me from feeling that satisfaction and notice how i've even i'm not even using the word happiness anymore because it doesn't feel like it's really capturing what I'm... It's like I'm talking about different pieces of happiness and I need to label them correctly <laughs> because I want to communicate very clearly. That's what I'm practicing to do right here. So, yeah, the things that got in the way of me experiencing satisfaction when I arrived at my goals and it was complete was... Uh, a lot of self-criticism, I think, robs us of that satisfaction and that happiness because, okay, we've done it. It was a huge journey. We made a lot of mistakes along the way. The picture that we had at the beginning never matches the picture of actual reality at the end. And I used to really get self-critical because of that. And I've replaced those self-critical thoughts with the realization that it's actually beautiful that the picture that I had at the beginning is different to the picture that I have at the end because that shows that I've grown. That shows that this picture at the beginning was actually quite limited. And the picture at the end, it's had, you know, contributions from other people. I've had new insights, I've learned new lessons, and all of that has transformed that image as it's moved from, you know, something that I'm holding in my head to something that I'm holding in my hand at the end of that process. So, yeah, I used to have a lot of self-critical thoughts. I used to look, think about, like, how many mistakes I made along the way. And one of the easy things to get self-critical about is when I started, I, I was going to spend, you know, three weeks to complete this task, it took me three months. Like that could immediately rob me of so much happiness. How absurd is that in the present moment? Maybe you, even you sitting there, you're like, that is absurd. But wait a minute, I've done that too. <laughs> and I think just bringing a little bit of awareness to it is the beginning of the solution because, you know, you know you're holding on to this self-criticism. What are you going to replace it with? And I just gave you my example. Now I'm thinking that it's actually growth. I'm changing as a person. I'm learning new lessons. And another thing that's really helped let go of the self-criticism is um, realizing that, you know, we're on lots of little journeys throughout our lives. We create little, like like a goal that's going to take three weeks, a goal that's going to take three months, a goal that's going to take three years. But then you've got the big picture of your entire life where you're going from being a little baby to being an old person. And then inevitably your death, like how much you're evolving and changing throughout all of that. So yeah, maybe during one of these journeys, there's a lot of things to be self-critical about, but as I'm learning and growing, next time I embark on a journey, on another one of these smaller journeys within the great journey of life, I'm not going to make those mistakes. I've learned those lessons, so it's going to be a little bit better. And if you forget that, if you forget that you're always learning and growing, you're going to constantly focus on the 
critical aspects, what you did wrong. But if you can look at the bigger picture of all the projects that you've accomplished before, even if it doesn't have to be this huge groundbreaking world changing thing, you could have just like lost five kilos. You know, that could be one of the goals that you set for yourself and you did that. And maybe it took you 10 times as long as you thought it would. And you ended up eating way more junk food than you told yourself that you would. And you didn't exercise nearly as much as you wanted to. Plenty of things to be self-critical about. But you've learned that lesson now. You know how... You've, you, you've proven to yourself that you know how to lose weight. So you can do it again and you can do it better. And I guarantee you next time you try to change anything regarding that aspect of your life you've got the experience behind you so next time you you might say like i want to put on i want to get some muscle like or i want to get i want to be able to run a five kilometer jog and then you might it might take you longer than you expected and you might make more mistakes than you expected and if you focus on being critical about that and forget that in the past it was a struggle for you to even lose five kilos like I call it moving the goalposts. I think that's what, like a good way to that everybody kind of understands for robbing yourself of satisfaction and happiness. Like when you achieve something and you immediately go, okay, like now I need to achieve this. Now I need to achieve this. And you just keep making it more and more difficult for yourself, which is great for growth. I used to believe. <laughs> I still believe it's great for growth to keep setting new goals, but this self-critical aspect that sneaks into it is going to slow you down a lot more than it's going to speed you up. Like you learn from your mistakes, but there's a difference between learning a new lesson and criticizing yourself. You don't need the element of self-criticism to understand that there's a better way to do things and it's very it's a very subtle distinction like i don't have to beat myself up to learn the lesson but the effect of letting go of that self-criticism and turning it into a more growth mindset type thing is going to be that you're not going to slow yourself down so much And you're going to set more goals because imagine sometimes I like to imagine myself as like a little kid and like, or or like separate myself into two parts. Like the little kid, everybody does this probably the little kid and the adult me that's like instructing the little kid what to do. Imagine the adult me is really critical all the time and just like constantly telling the kid what he's done wrong. Like how many goals do you think the little kid is going to set like how many things do you think the little kid's going to want to do how proactive is that child going to be like is it going to want to you know go go to the adult and say i want to do so many things i'm going to set 10 goals i think the more that you criticize the child which is you the more it's going to shrink and it's going to like i when I, when I get too much criticism, I shrink. I think it's a pretty normal, natural human response to shrink when you're criticized and to avoid. Like, if you had uh, a coach or a teacher, yeah, everybody's probably had a teacher that was very critical and that's how they, that was their teaching style. They constantly point out everything that's wrong. They do a lot of punishing. They do a lot of yelling. They keep you in at lunchtime, you know, what does that create in the classroom? Everybody shrinks. Everybody just wants to do the bare minimum and make sure that the teacher doesn't get cross. So inside yourself, you've got that same dynamic going on. Like you're both the, the person that's trying to achieve your goals, but you're also the voice of the critic that's saying you did that wrong. You can also be, you know, the equal opposite of that you can be an encouraging adult to the child like the the inner child you can just constantly give encouragement and you've probably had teachers in classrooms like that where it's all about 
like telling you, oh, you did a good job. Uh, like, <laughs> you did a good job. There's, there's not much to it, is there? <laughs> Just don't like constantly bombard somebody with criticism and they will expand. They will start to explore. They'll be like, what else can I do? This is exciting. When I try new things, I grow, I learn. More becomes possible. And as more becomes possible, there's even more things to choose from that I could try next. That's fun. So it's not all about happiness. <laughs> it's not all about defining happiness or experiencing happiness even. This video diary has highlighted the power of criticism versus encouragement, really, hasn't it? And it's highlighted for me that I can be more encouraging with myself. And the more I can let go of that criticism, that self-criticism, judgment of myself, and beating myself up, the more that inner child is going to come out and want to explore. Like, I'll be able to set 100 goals instead of 10 if I'm not scared of failing because failing, which is an illusion anyway, <laughs> because you can always try again. But like, if I'm not scared that there's going to be all this self-criticism and self-judgment, then it's only excitement. It's only wonder. It's only exploration and positive things. Wouldn't that be nice? It is nice. This morning's been quite a reflective morning. I've been th thinking about some of my older content. I was scrolling through, looking at like old video diaries, thinking about the, all the different journeys that I've already been on. And I've noticed while I was doing that, that I was hard on myself. If you take one thing away from this video, it's just like, go easy on yourself, mate. You're learning. There is no finish line. That's, that's how I define and experience happiness, and I think it's a great way to do it. The, like, creating the meaning, going on the journey, moving towards your goals is, is happiness. Like, that's where you feel that fulfillment, satisfaction, but in the process of sharing that, I've also noticed like I can experience happiness at the finish line as well. Like all of it can be happiness. I don't have to limit myself to defining and experiencing happiness any particular way. And the reason that I've come to this conclusion is because I was starting to notice that different people were defining and experiencing happiness differently and kind of getting into conflict and argument amongst themselves about like what life's all about. And I started to notice like this person has got it totally figured out. They are happy. And this person has got it totally figured out and they are happy. But they 100% disagree about how to arrive at that happiness. So I got into this whole train of thought. If you get anything out of these videos, please pass them on to somebody else you know who may benefit. Somebody else who's pursuing happiness and trying to figure out how to be less self-critical. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking and feeling in the present moment. I can't remember what the rest of the things are. <laughs> this is the end of this video.